This is the message that God gave me. It is, you think, I don't know you, beloved. I know you better than you think. I know you better than anyone. I know you better than anyone ever will. I am he that will wash you. I am he that will wipe away every unclean mark from your body. I am he that will bathe you in my righteousness. I am he that will wash you in my love. I am he that will be there when it all seems lost. I am he that will be the only way to be in the midst of the trial. I am the one who makes all others look at you and wonder who is the God that she serves. I make all wonder who is the person that she loves. Who is the one that she wants. Who is the one that makes her laugh. I am he that makes all want to be near you. I am he that make all want to be drawn to you. I am he that will make you wealthy beyond your imagination. I am he that will satisfy thee. I am he that will be the first and the last in your life. I am he that will bring all things to completion because you call on my name. I am he that is in thee. I am he that is in thee. Find me. God says if you seek me with all of your heart then you will find me. One thing that God allowed me to realize during my meditation time today is just like with the movie, The Matrix, and I hate to go there, but I have to. No one could tell the, the main character, Neo, who, what his identity was. They were wondering who was the one, who was the one. No one could tell him that he was the one. He had to realize it. So just like with this message today, I'm going to give it to you. But it's not really going to sink in until you actually really realize it. Until you really realize what it means for you. So he gave me a few verses to go with this. The first verse says, it's Acts 17, 26 through 29. God began by making one person. And from him came all the different people who live everywhere in the world. God decided exactly when and where they must live. God wanted them to look for him and perhaps search all around for him and find him, though he is not far from any of us. By his power we live and move and exist. Some of your own poets have said, for we are his children. Since we are God's children, you must not think that God is like something that people imagine or make from gold or silver or rock. <laughs> I'm just going to make a quick comment there. God is saying that if you are his child, think about that. Think about that. The features that you have from your earthly parents, your flesh. Think of the features that you have from them. If you are God's child, that means you carry his feet. I don't think it's, it's not sinking in. It's not sinking in. If you are God's child... <laughs> Who is mankind that God is worthy of them? Why would God send his son to die for you? Why would God send his only son to die for you? What made you so worthy? What made you so worthy? Jesus said you would do greater works than these. Jesus said it is better for me to go so that my spirit will remain with you. What makes you so worthy that God sent his son to die for you? <laughs> Ooh, come on now. John 17, 20 through 23. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one, I in them, and you in me, that they may become perfectly one, so that the world may know that you sent me and love them, even as you love me. Who is mankind that God is worthy of them? Jesus is the Son of God. You are a child of God. Come on now. The same spirit that operated in Jesus is operating in you. You, I can't, I mean, I can't, I can't tell you this enough. You have to realize it. And when you realize it, you're going to walk like it. Galatians 4, 5 through 7. To redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. 
come on now and then Ephesians 1 5 through 14 I am not gonna read all of that but basically God wants you to realize who you are he wants you to find him you know we're praying and we're praying and we're praying you're, you're not realizing the power that lies within you you're not realizing who you are you're not realizing your full identity in Christ you're not walking in your authority you're not walking on water you're not walking like you are a child of God you are not walking like you carry that same spirit of God in you God needs you to realize who you are. The creation groans for you to realize who you are in God. For the creation waits with eager longing, longing for the revealing of the children of God. And this is Romans 8, 19 through 23. And I'm going to just skip to 23. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the spirit groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. Your spirit on the inside is waiting for you to realize who you are, not just the world, not just creation, but your spirit on the inside is waiting for you to realize who you are in God. It's waiting for you to stand up and for it to click. And once it clicks, you're going to walk into that authority. And so that's why I use the example of that movie, The Matrix, is because it didn't. Is, is nobody could have told him that he had to realize it and when he realized it he walked in so a whole nother level of authority to defeat the creation to defeat the whole matrix so hate to use that example of a movie but that's that's just what i had to use is you have to realize it you have to realize who you are and know it and that's why god says seek me diligently seek me and you will find me seek me and you will realize that i'm not far off right in the mirror right in the mirror so that is my message i pray that it blessed you god loves you and so do i